do you put a number on the severity of Dupuytren contracture? How is it measured? It's trickier than you might think. The cord is the issue, but what we look at are the knuckles, which are bent by the cord. One reason it's tricky is that the bend in one joint can depend on the position of the next joint. Another reason is play in the system. If one end of the cord starts in the stretchy skin of the palm, pushing a finger will give a different measurement than straightening it on its own. The thumb has its own measurement issues. It moves in two perpendicular directions, and it also rotates. The cords are the problem, but very hard to measure, even with MRI. You can use a finger joint protractor called a goniometer to measure the bend of each knuckle. If you don't have a goniometer, you can use a tabletop test. Can you put your palm flat down on a tabletop? And past a point, it's hard to get your hands into your pocket, the pocket test. The tabletop test can be thrown off by joints which can still move backward. One workaround for this is the curved tabletop test. But what if you don't have this equipment? How can you track progress without having to go to a doctor or therapist? You could trace your fingers on a piece of paper, but it turns out this isn't very reliable. You could hold up your hand to a clock and follow what numbers the fingertips point toward. You could use a paper angle template and estimate the angles from it. You could compare the bend of your fingers to a group of diagrams and find the best match. You could use an interactive form such as this to match the bend in your fingers by moving the fingers on a web page. There's a link to this on the Dupuytren Foundation website. Once the technology improves, your computer camera might measure the angles directly. Why bother? Because we still don't have great data on how a Dupuytren contracture progresses, treated or untreated, and why everyone seems to follow a different time scale. We do know that most people have terrible memory when recalling how long it takes for contractors to change. The Dubitrin Foundation is actively investigating these and newer methods to track the progress of large numbers of people with Dubitrin disease so that we can develop individual treatment programs based on a person's biology rather than using a one-size-fits-all approach. And the big picture is to support the Dubitrin Foundation, which is working for everyone with Dubitrin disease, to find a cure.